morning. It is Monday, July 26. I'm Danielle Wiggins with your 3 News Now morning update. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me on the WKYC Facebook and YouTube pages. We start this morning with Holly, who's tracking what I like to call a pool day today. Thank you, Danielle, and it's hot as we head through the rest of today. It is definitely feeling like late July and we're forecasting temperatures well into the 80s, even at lunchtime and beyond. Plenty of sunshine, too, so it's going to be a nice night to uh, grill and just get outside in general. Even a late night swim would not be a bad idea on a hot day like today. We'll have similar lows as we start off your Tuesday, 60s to around 70. Waking up tomorrow, a mix of clouds and sun expected for your Tuesday. And then as we get into Tuesday night and especially into early Wednesday, we start to see some scattered showers and thunderstorms return. And there'll be smaller chances initially. We'll get into better chances beyond that. Hold. I will show you. In the meantime, it's a hot one. Upper 80s for highs today and then 87 tomorrow. <coughs> By Wednesday, we are looking at the chance of showers, thunderstorms, not a washout of a day by any means, partly sunny skies otherwise, and then showers and storms will be likely on Thursday, and that front will pack quite a punch. Highs on Thursday around 80, by Friday we're only around 70, and in the mid to upper 70s as we look ahead to our upcoming weekend. Danielle, back to you. Thank you so much, Holly. And this morning we start with COVID-19 news as the Delta variant continues to threaten the country. And now Dr. Anthony Fauci is even saying we could see the CDC change its guidance for mask wearing nationwide. Fauci says the guidance is under active consideration. As for the COVID-19 pandemic in Ohio, Governor Mike DeWine could announce new guidance or recommendations for Ohioans as soon as today. The announcements may be specifically aimed at guidance for Ohio school districts, as the Delta variant also spikes cases in states nationwide. Summit County's Public Health Commissioner says in order to keep kids in the classroom, taking all precautions against the contagious virus is what needs to happen. I do believe that is the safest. It's gonna be important that we follow those public health measures. We all have to understand that it's a public health measure um, that isn't political. And of course, we will keep you updated all day on when the announcement could be made. So stick with WKYC.com for the very latest. And then here in Ohio, a Browns player is on the COVID-19 reserve list right now. Jeremiah Awusu Koromoa was a second round pick out of Notre Dame. It's not known yet if he tested positive or is a close contact of someone who did. If he's positive and unvaccinated, he'll have to quarantine for the next 10 days, which would mean that he will miss the start of training camp. Fully vaccinated players can return after two negative tests 24 hours apart. The first full team practice is Wednesday. And a mask mandate will go in effect in St. Louis today. This is for indoor public places and on public transportation. It will apply to everyone age five or older, as well as to those who are vaccinated. Wearing masks outdoors will be encouraged, especially in group settings. St. Louis's mayor and county executive will provide an update this morning. Turning to Olympic and COVID-19 news, today Tokyo Olympic organizers reported 16 new cases of COVID-19 infections among those who have accreditation to attend the Olympics. Three are athletes from abroad, all staying outside the athlete's village. Now this raises the total number of COVID-19 positives to 148 cases connected to the Olympics, including media, officials, contractors, and other personnel. Meanwhile, great news for Cleveland natives competing in the games. Lee Kiefer was born in Cleveland and won gold in the individual foil in women's fencing yesterday. Congratulations to her. You see that smile in the gold medal. So this makes her the 
first American woman to win gold in individual foil. And she's not the only Clevelander making big moves already. Delonte Tiger Johnson won his first boxing match on Saturday, beating his opponent from Argentina. The match came down to a split decision, three to two. Johnson fights again tomorrow. And make sure you stick with three news all day for Olympic updates on air and online because we have you covered. We are your only station for all things Olympics. And now we turn now to developing news in Ashtabula County. A firefighter from Pittsburgh has died after drowning in Lake Erie. It happened Saturday afternoon in Conneaut. We're told 38 year old Lee Weber was swimming in the lake with family and friends when he got caught under a break wall. The Coast Guard and other rescue crews helped to recover Weber's body. A GoFundMe has already raised $30,000 to support his wife and two young boys. Organizers posted that Weber was an organ donor and his decision will help dozens of lives. Okay, let's turn to some consumer news right now, starting with a look at gas prices. They went up by less than two cents over the past two weeks. The national average price for regular gas now sits around $3.22 a gallon. That's 98 cents higher than it was a year ago. According to the Lumberg survey, gasoline stocks are very plentiful which could mean no change or a slight price decline over the next several days. Okay, talk about a buzzkill. The truly seltzer trend may be going stale. Shares of Boston Beer, which owns Truly, tumbled 26% in morning trading on Friday. The company blamed weaker than expected demand for the hard seltzer drinks. Experts say new competition and slowing growth were among the factors in sales this quarter. Okay, now we checked this weekend and Indians gear is going fast at team shops. Fans seem eager to get what will now be known as Indians and memorabilia after the team announced Friday that they're changing their name to the Guardians after this season. But places like GV Artwork are already, they are already selling out of their Guardians tees. So now we are moving on to our reasons to smile segment and this next story will give rock fans a reason to smile. A rock and roll legends guitar comes to the rock hall today. Dubbed the first lady of rock guitar, Lita Ford was known for being the lead guitarist in the Runaways before going solo. Her iconic BC Rich Warlock guitar, which was used throughout her 2014 and 2015 tour performances and at the famous Whiskey A Go Go's 50th anniversary performance will be presented at two. And speaking of the Rock Hall, don't forget this Friday is when tickets will go on sale for the Rock Hall induction ceremony. That will be held October 30th at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. 13 inductees will be part of the newest class. And don't forget that we do. We have all of this ticket information live right now at WKYC.com forward slash front row. Well, thank you for taking time to join me for this 3 News Now morning update. Our digital team will continue to bring you the stories making headlines around Northeast Ohio and beyond. Make sure you continue to check our social media pages and WKYC.com throughout the day. I'm Danielle Wiggins, and I'll see you Tuesday morning on go starting at 4.30 a.m. Have a great day, everybody, and keep on persevering.